Hi there, I'm Pastor Hee Kyung Jung from Presbyterian Church of Korea. Now I'm living in Boyne, as you are, as a master program students for ecumenical studies at the University of Boyne. I hope who is watching this video clip will be in peace in this pandemic. To say hello in Korean, you usually say 안녕하세요. It literally means, are you in peace? So I think it's a really I mean, critical question to ask ourselves, am I in peace? So can you say to your friend, or you can say to my friend Eeyore, 안녕하세요. <laughs> I hope everyone is in peace now. So today I'm going to share my reflection on the third word uh, of Jesus Christ on the cross. So today's scripture reading is from Gospel John chapter 19 verse 23 to 27. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was fulfilled what the scripture says. They divided my garments among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he saved his mother. Women, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Let us take a moment to reflect on the words we've heard. During this physical distancing season, luckily I found the best place to go for a store nearby my dormitory. It's the Papa Store for Fried Hof. It is located in 50 minutes walk from my place. Well, actually, as for me, in Korean, it seemed very peculiar to have a cemetery in the very center of the city because in my context, we usually place the cemetery to be separated from living ones. But as I was getting used to go there, it told me that death is not far away from our daily lives. Also, it challenged me how to accept the meaning of life and death and helped me to understand the death of Jesus in this Lenten season. In the fried hof, I have seen so many people were buried with their loved ones, such as wife and husband and partners and family members. And most of the time, I contemplated on the tombstone because the tombstone just told me how they lived, what they believed in, and whom they loved most during their short lifespan. In the very end of the cemetery, which is the nearest venue to the church, there were also tombs for fathers and brothers with a cross-shaped tombstone. In today's scripture reading, we found two types of people before the death of Jesus. One is the soldiers, who were calculating what they will have after one's death. And the other is women, who were standing near the cross. Ironically, Bible says that even soldiers fulfill the scripture without knowing what they are doing. While women were tolerating the hardest moments in history before the death of Jesus. And after that, 
Jiju saw them all and was so much concerned about his loved ones, especially his mother, even in his greatest agony. And finally, Jiju saved his mother and his loved disciple. Behold, behold, twice. Behold is a step forward just the seeing. To behold, we need to take time to look around and look at it back helpfully with full eyes open. Like just what I had to look at the tombstone carefully. And if we fail to behold what is going on around us or who is with us, we finally missed the things which Jesus asked to us to do. And in the parable of Good Samaritan, people asked to Jesus, who is my neighbor? <clears throat> but Jesus questioned back to them, who was a neighbor to the people who are in need? Because we are not disconnected at all, I am because you are. As a foreigner who is living in different contexts, the most frequent question to me was, do we have a family or do we have a friend here? And when I had to say no to the question, I felt lonesome. Even I arrived born just a few weeks before. When I read this scripture again, I felt Jesus radically challenged me to be a friend of my flatmate and to be a daughter of my neighborhood. In this period, Jesus is just inviting us to be a family member for the bigger, bigger one in God's kingdom. And if we are a member of the same family, we could make a big difference in this most self-centered situation during pandemic. It is not only about me, but also about we. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So let's boldly be a friend for those who are around us and be a family member for those who need our help. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for being with us in this tough time. And please open our eyes to see who is our friend and who is our family members and to whom we can be a friend or family member. Lord, please awaken us of the things you asked to do in this pandemic. And please believe the doctors and nurses who are fighting against the virus in this pandemic and give them your strength and health to take their responsibility boldly. And God, please remember our family members who are living in different country. Please tell them how much we love them and how much we miss them and keep them safe until we meet again. And please make us be a friend for those who are in need in this pandemic. Thank you, Lord. You are with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope the very best to health in spirit in your body. And don't forget to behold what you just told us. May God bless you all. Thank you.